Good evening and welcome to evening prayer on this Monday the 19th of October. Today the church is remembering Henry Martin and Luke the Evangelist. We met, I mentioned St Luke this morning. Um, so this evening I thought I'd uh, just briefly give you a potted history of Henry Martin who is remembered as a translator of scripture and a missionary in India and Persia. So Henry Martin was born on the 18th of February 1781 in Truro in Cornwall. Um, he was uh, went to Truro Grammar School and then he went to St John's College in Cambridge. Um, and when he met with Charles uh, Simeon, who was a uh, evangelical English clergyman, he um, went on to become a missionary. He was ordained priest within the Church of England and went to become a chaplain for the British East India Company. And whilst he, um, he arrived in India in 1806, uh, so he was, uh, what, 27 at the time, and uh, he uh, spent his time preaching and studying linguistics, for which he had a bit of a talent. He translated the whole of the New Testament into Urdu, Persian, and judeo persyric um, He also translated the Psalms into Persian and the Book of Common Prayer into Urdu. Um, from India, he then went out to uh, Bushir, Shiraz, uh, Isfahan, and Tabriz. When he was seized with a fever uh, in 1812, he um, was forced to stop at a place called uh, Tokat, uh, which was in the Ottoman Empire of the time. And there, unfortunately, there was also plague going through, and he um, he he devoted himself to his faith. But sadly, he died there at the very young age of 31. Um, so we will remember um, Henry Martin in our prayers. Uh, we shall also remember uh, his his translation of um, the New Testament and the Book of Common Prayer into the local languages, some of the local dialects within India and within uh, what was Persia, which now we would probably call the Middle East. Um, and as we do, let us pray for all Christians within those countries. Let us pray for all missionaries. And we, of course, remember Peter and Patricia in our prayers. But let us take a moment of stillness as we come together to pray. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and honour, wrapped in light as in a garment. The sun knows the time for its setting, you make darkness that it may be night. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. When you sent forth your spirit they created, and you renewed the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will make music to my God whilst I have, have my being. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray of one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts, and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. Our first psalm for this evening is Psalm 105. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. O oh, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises, and tell of all his marvellous works. Rejoice in the praise of his holy name. Let the hearts of them rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his, and his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are all in the earth. He has always been mindful of his covenant, the promise that he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath that he swore to Isaac which he established as a statute for Jacob, an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying, To you will I give the land of Canaan, 
to be the portion of your inheritance. When they were but few in number, of little account and sojourners in the land, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no one to do them wrong, and rebuked even kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Then he called down famine over the land, and broke every staff of bread. But he had sent a man before him, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They shackled his feet with fetters, his neck was ringed with iron. Until all he foretold came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him, the ruler of people set him free. He appointed him lord of his household and ruler of all he possessed, to instruct his princes as he willed, and to teach his counsellors wisdom. Then Israel came into Egypt, Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them too many for their adversaries, whose tar- hearts he turned so that they hated his people, and dealt craftily with his servants. Then sent he Moses his servant, and Aram whom he, chose, he had chosen. He showed his signs through his, his, their word, and their wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness, and it grew dark, yet they did not heed his word. He turned their waters into blood, and slew all their fish. Their land swarmed with frogs, even in the king's chambers. He spoke the word, and there came clouds of flies. Swarms of gnats within all their borders. He gave them hailstones for rain, and flames of lightning in their land. He blasted their vines and their fig trees, and shattered trees across their country. He spoke the word, and grasshoppers came, and young locusts without number. They ate every plant in their land, and devoured the fruit of their soil. He smote all the firstborn in their land, the first fruits of all their strength. Then he brought them out with silver and gold. There was not one among their tribe that stumbled. Egypt was glad at their departing, for a dread of them had fallen upon them. He spread out a cloud for a covering, and a fire to light up the night. They asked, and he brought them quails. He satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock and water gushed out and ran in the dry places like a river. For he remembered his holy word and Abraham his servant. So he brought forth his people with joy, his chosen ones with singing. He gave them the lands of the nations and he took possession of the fruits of their soil. Then they were that they might keep his statutes and faithfully observe his laws. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. Our Old Testament reads a continuation of the first book of Maccabees, chapter six, verses one to seventeen. King Antiochus was going through the upper provinces when he heard that the uh, Elamas in, in Persia was a city famed for its wealth in silver and gold. Its temple was very rich, containing golden shields, breastplates, and weapons left there by Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian king, who first reigned over the Greeks. So he came and tried to take the city and plunder it, but he could not, because his plan had become known to the citizens, and they withstood him in battle. So he fled and in great disappointment left there to return to Babylon. Then someone came to him in Persia and reported that the armies that had gone into the land of Judah had been routed, that Lycia had gone first with a strong force but had turned and fled before the Jews, that the Jews had grown strong with the arms, supplies and abundant spoils that they had taken from the armies they had cut down, that they had torn down the abomination that he had erected on the altar in Jerusalem and that he had surrounded the sanctuary with high walls as before, and also Bethzur, his town. 
When the king heard this news, he was astounded and badly shaken. He took to his bed and became sick with disappointment, because things had turned out for him as uh, had not turned out for him as he had planned. He lay there for many days because deep disappointment continually gripped him, and he realized that he was dying. So he called all his friends and said to them, "Sleep has departed from my eyes, and I am downhearted with worry." I said to myself, "To what distress have I come?" And into what a great flood I am now plunged. For I was kind and beloved in my power. But now I remember the wrong I did in Jerusalem. I seized all its vessels of silver and gold. And I sent it to the uh, and I sent to destroy the inhabitants of Judah without good reason. I know that it is because of this that these misfortunes have come upon me. Here I am, perishing of bitter disappointment in a strange land. And then he called for Philip one of his friends, and made him ruler over all his kingdom. He gave him the crown and his robe and the signet, so that he might guide the, his son Antiochus and bring him up to be king. Thus King Antiochus died, and there in the 149th year, when Lycia learned that the king was dead, he set up Achaeosus, the son, king's son, to reign. Lysias had brought him up from boyhood. He named him Equapator. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The glorious grace of God is freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. Blessed are you, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for you have blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You have chosen us to be yours in Christ before the foundation of the world, that you should be holy and blameless before you. In love you destined us for adoption as your children through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of your will, to the, the, to the praise of your glorious grace, which you free bestowed on us in the Beloved. In you we have redemption through the blood of Christ, the forgiveness of our sins, according to the riches of your grace, which you have lavished upon us. You have made known to us all in all wisdom and insight the mystery of your will, according to your purpose which you set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The glorious grace of God is free bestowed on us in the Beloved. Our New Testament reading is a continuation of John's Gospel, chapter 13, verses 1 to 11. Now before the feast of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go uh, to the Father. Having loved his own who, uh, who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that had tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father. And to the Son. And to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And be not wise in your own sight. The one who saw what Jesus did. Has bore witness. That you also may believe. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. 
From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise <clears throat> made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The one who saw what Jesus did has borne witness that you may also believe. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the day that has been. We give thanks for your work in this world. We give thanks for all that has been done in your name. We give thanks for all who know you and who love you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your servant, Henry Martin, for his translation of your text, for spreading your word, for bringing Christ into the lives of those who have not yet met him. We pray for all Christians who were evangelised by him, for all who have come to know you and love you. We pray for the people of the Middle East and of India, and we pray especially for all Christians in those parts of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for all being affected by the coronavirus. We pray for those who are in self-isolation, those who are in quarantine, those who are shielding, those who have died, and those who are in hospital. We pray for all who are worried about their families, for all who are worried about friends and relatives. We pray, for Lord, for those who are under additional lockdown measures. We pray for all those who are in the north in the significant lockdown, for those in Northern Ireland, those in Wales. We pray for all who are worried about family and friends who live there. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who are worried and anxious about their jobs. We pray for those who are concerned about the next chapter that their life may take. We pray for those who are seeking your will and your discernment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we pray for those whose jobs have been furloughed, who have had contracts ended, and who have been placed on reduced hours. We pray for all who are struggling to make ends meet. We pray for those who are making use of the food bank. We pray for those who are worried about their homes and about their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for peace in this world, for an end to violence and an end to suffering. We pray for all who are at risk of domestic violence, for those who are at risk of drug or alcohol abuse. We pray for the innocent who are caught up in that wrath. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for those who are sick in mind, body and spirit. We pray particularly for Davy, for Megan, for Joe. We pray too for those who reach the end of their lives and those who recently lost their lives. We pray particularly for Laurie. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of stillness, we offer to God the thoughts and prayers of our innermost heart.
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, who by your Holy Spirit gave Henry Martin a longing to tell the good news of Christ and skills to translate the scriptures, by the same Spirit, give us grace to, fo- to offer you our gifts, whatever you, wherever you may lead, at whatever the cost. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. So let us pray of confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please do join me tomorrow morning at 9am at 5pm for morning and evening prayer. And just a short reminder that this Sunday after the Eucharist, uh, the APCM for St Mary's will take place. Uh, If you'd like to join us virtually, please do let me know if you need the link. And also uh, we will be remembering uh, All Souls Tide uh, uh, in a couple of weeks time. If you have any names that you would like to be mentioned in prayer uh, and to remember with candle lighting, please do let me know the name uh, so we can add it onto our list. But until we can see each other again, God bless, stay safe, and have a very good evening.